sailor's wife.
and those things with the big heads don't help to clear things up. Nobody helps you. You have to puzzle it out for yourself. If a cat, if a cat. Now there's a sound you've begun to know. It means they try to put something into your mouth. Sometimes you give them a fight. Open your mouth for mother. That's a good boy. Another sound you're getting to know. A face goes with it. Please, Joey, like a good boy. All right. Might as well take the darn stuff. If she wants you to. That's mother's beautiful, big, brave man. Knows how to make you feel good, that one. That's how they get you, Skeezix. Call you their big, brave, beautiful man. That's how they make you do all the things you don't want to do. Take your hippocat, comb your hair, buy them wedding rings. <laughs> You're getting to know that one, too. The one with the loud, rough voice. When he holds you against him, he doesn't feel soft like the other one. Well, so long for two. I gotta go out and kill a few patients. He's leaving. He always goes. Don't let him do that. Stop him. What's the matter, Joey? Are you crying because your daddy is going? Take it easy, Skeezix. I'll be back soon. The legs begin to grow long. And one sunny day when you're feeling strong, you straighten up.
guys. But you can't go today. Indeed, that's right. I forgot. His grandma. Oh, yeah. Gee. Ready, March? Yes, darling. Joey, stay in the house till we get back. Like a good boy. Ned Brinker's bringing little Jenny over to keep him company. That's good. These things are nothing for kids. Nothing for anybody. She was a good old lady, wasn't she? These things are nothing for kids. But it did happen to you. You're a kid, and yet here you are. And suddenly, you have no grandma. It'll be funny without you. Hard to imagine the house without me. Good morning, Joseph. I'm sorry about your grandma. Death is a sad thing. People cry and sob, grown people. You haven't seen your father cry. He just looks kind of angry. Grandma was his mother. Gosh, suppose your mother ever. Oh, no, that isn't going to happen. Just stop thinking like that. Get back to Grandma, quick. Look out, Joey. Your eyes are watery. Blow your nose. Jenny sees you crying. Jenny. 
No other girl could ever be like her. She's just so unusual. I just know he doesn't pick a lemon. It's only dumb luck when a boy finds the right girl the way I do. You say that to make me feel good. Doesn't it?
say this to you. You people up in the stands have got to do your part tomorrow. You've got to let the Wildcats know that you're behind them. Yell! Yell to your voices hoarse, then yell some more. This is your college, your team, the Wildcats! <laughs> Don't let them down. Get on your song with freshmen, page three, the football song. Show what you're going to do tomorrow. Hit, hit, one, two, three. The Wildcats are on the rampage. Hear those Wildcats yell. Yeah, the Wildcats are out to beat you, to beat you to a fair. Of course you're not. She's probably a wonderful girl. 
Only thing I say is, is that your dollar bill or mine? Mine! <laughs> I'll pay you tomorrow when I get my check. Only thing I say is it's alright to get married eventually, but I don't have plenty of fun first. People can have fun after they're married. <laughs> what people? My father and mother. They have lots of fun, don't yours? I guess so. But not with each other, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> sure you don't want to come? Relax. Uh-huh. Leave that translation out so I can copy it when I get back. Okay. Thanks so long. So long. Hey, but my shirt is! An acid is monobasic, dibasic, or tribasic, according to the number of replaceable hydrogen atoms. Thus, HNO3 is monobasic, H2SO4 is dibasic, H3PO is tribasic. Book 2 of the Odyssey, where we left off yesterday, Mr. Taylor. Dear Joe, Hazel and Bob have the cutest white stucco house. They are living together like two lovebirds, lucky bums. Mr. Taylor. Thus did Telemachus invoke Zeus, and the all-powerful answering his prayer sent forth two eagles from his mountain. Swift as the wind of a storm they flew, wing tip to wing, in lordly... She is never away. Do you go out with girls much? 
much. Well, what makes you ask? I don't know. I was, I was just thinking. You mean all kinds of fellows, don't you? I mean, don't I? What kind would you say I am? I don't know. You're a problem. You're a problem, eh? Do you know you're a hell of an attractive girl? Uh, Bula, what would you do if... Suppose I was the kind of a class of a type of fellow that would suddenly grab you and kiss you. What would you do? But you're not that type. No, I'm not. That's what I thought. And you're not that type of girl. You're romantic. Like me. Yeah. Say I'm just beginning to date you. With the starlight falling down my brain. You and me together breathing in it. That's just an expression. You and me on the threshold of the unknown. Yeah, the unknown. A new secret to learn. A new flower to pluck. A blank page to write on. Yeah, you and me both. No keepsakes have we. Yes. 
Yes, yes, Jane, darling, I want to sit next to you, to be near you, to touch you. Nice night. It's just the kind of night I hoped it would be. Did you, did you think much about tonight, too? Did you? Quite a lot. You are never away from your home in my heart. I always think of you quite a lot. There is never a day. There is never a day when you... Jenny, I think about you all the time. Do you, Joe? Every minute. Oh, so I am. I was due down at the Elks five minutes ago. 
How long will you be? Oh, not long. I'll pick you up in about an hour. Thanks for the supper, Marge. Good night, Ned. Say, Joe, I got one on you. That stock I told you about has gone up 22 points. You are a sucker not to buy. You know what a smart man once said? If you get 10% on your money, you can eat better, right? And if you get 2% on your money, you can sleep better. Whoever said that didn't know much about business. Who was he? J.P. Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> Marge, if you and Jane are talking, I'd like to go upstairs and get some reading. Of course, yeah. Good night, Jane. Good night, Dr. Taylor. Oh, Marge. Feeling better, darling? Yes, dear. What did your father mean by that, Jenny? By what, Mrs. Taylor? About Joe being too ambitious to be a small-time doctor. Has Joe said anything about that to you? No. It's hmm. just, Pop thinks, well, it seems a shame with the wonderful business like Pop's. He has no son, and he says he can teach it to Joe in a, a couple of years. Pop thinks Joe is smart. So do I. Joe's good at anything he likes to do. Joe's good at medicine, Jenny. His father says he's a born doctor. Jenny, what would you do if Joe refused to give up medicine? What would I do? I'd see to it that he became a real doctor, a rich one. We'd go to some big city, and I'd help him get to be the most successful doctor in town. I guess I'm more ambitious than you. <coughs> I think my husband is a very successful man. He's doing work he likes for people he likes, and he has the kind of home he needs. You think I'm the wrong kind of wife for Joe, don't you? You don't like me, and you never did, and I always knew it. When my father calls for me, tell him I got tired and went home. You know? I feel better now that war's been declared. So do I, Jenny. Joe? Joe, I'm out on the porch. Hurry! Hurry, sweetheart!
Yeah. 
to be funny. No, I'm not. Charlie's uncle came to the reunion especially to talk to me. You were offered a chance to be his partner, a partner of Dr. Denby. Well, you see, I was kind of a white-haired boy of Denby's when I was an intern at his hospital. And you have the nerve to stand there and tell me you turned him down, turned down a partnership in his I've office. got to think of my father. I'm just beginning to be some help to him. What it gets down to is this. You care more about your father than you do about me. It's got nothing to do with caring about anybody. I'm just not going to walk out on my father for you or Charlie or anybody. I'm not going to do it, that's all! Well, easy, Jenny. When a man slams a bathroom door like that, you're in trouble. Use your head. This is the biggest chance you'll ever have. Maybe the only chance to get the kind of life you want. Be clever. <laughs> Dr. Big 
Taxi! Taxi! This is what I get for being a Girl Scout. Save the doctor, save the patient, and get pneumonia myself. The way I feel now, I wouldn't care much. He lets that wife of his leg lead him around by the nose. Well, if a man lets himself be led around by the nose, then that's all he rates. The boss gets on my nerves, I've got a good mind to I've taken all I can, it's time to get up and get, and move to another job, or maybe another town. The gentleman burns me up, the gentleman gets me down. The gentleman is a dope, a man of many faults, a clumsy joke. Only my uncle by marriage. <laughs> 
<laughs> I wonder if Carrie would go down and help my father out. He's up to his neck in a flu epidemic. Good idea, but don't tell Lansdale. Must be too friendly with anybody he doesn't like. Well, to hell with Lansdale. Tut tut, my boy, there are many things that one would like to do that one does not duty. You must be good soldiers. This is a big time medical practice, Joe. Sure, through the portals of this office past the biggest screwballs in town. And the most repulsive. Sleep on. 
about how hard it is for a man to get off a merry-go-round after it gets going fast. You couldn't expect him to turn down a club like this. Being head man at our hospital makes a fellow one of the biggest men in medicine. Big politician, big social line, and banquet man. Not much of a doctor. Could have been, though. When he first came here, I thought, I hoped, he could have been one hell of a doctor. There's something about Joe. Something so good about him that you want him to be even better. I can understand a girl getting stuck on a fellow like that. Wouldn't blame her. Thanks, pal. Want to take the day off and go see a burlesque show? I don't know. I think going to the dedication ceremony might be funnier. <laughs> OK, we'll go there. Uh, can we stop on the way and have a drink first? A drink? Look at cockeyed. How else can you go to such things? <laughs> MD, scientist, physician, humanitarian. And better than all of these, an executive. To use a phrase of his own, he has been a good soldier. Big B Denby has four years. Broccoli, hogwash, boulder, dash, pony, baloney, tripe, and trash. runneth over. My heart is so full, words fail me. And yet, my co-worker, my young but very talented friend, Joseph Taylor Jr., the youngest man to ever receive this appointment. Joseph Taylor Jr. Look out, Joe. Once you cross this threshold, the door will close behind you. Ladies and gentlemen, this comes to me as a complete surprise. I look upon this appointment as a challenge. One must approach with deep humility the task of succeeding so illustrious a predecessor as Dr. Big B. Denton. <laughs> he has been an ornament to medicine, an ornament to a city, an ornament. Ornament. A man's brain is sometimes cleared by the sudden light of one word. In the flash of a split second, he sees a signpost pointing down a new road. And he may take a new turning that will affect the rest of his life. The split second is over. It takes a special talent to be an ornament. I am not blessed with this talent. Marjorie. I must therefore respectfully. One foot, other foot, one foot, other foot. I decline the appointment. As a matter of fact, I have another offer in a smaller hospital where my father is physician in chief. I'll be his assistant. I want to practice medicine again. I'm going home. Small town doctor. 